You have to understand that many women don't care about what you had to do to get where you are as a man. Because they are not a man and will never be. They only care about where you are now and what she then claims they should get. That's why they get all insincere about the prenup crying and saying things like Hey, what do women and crocodiles have in common? It's simple. They're both good at creating the art of counterfeit lamentations. That's deep. I guess that one will fly over their heads, won't it? Let's find out, shall we? Greetings everyone. Romaine here. Welcome to Male Conversations Unlocked, the classroom for men, where common sense is not something you were born with but what you were taught. We have in our presence one of the most dangerous cold-blooded animals alive, and if caught, the chances of you getting out its grip without leaving unscathed or dead is very rare. But in spite of all of that, he is in household name, became an idiom all over the world. He passed on the skills for well basically every human possible, even babies. Yes, I said it. Even babies. But the ones who have truly mastered his teachings are women. Without further ado, please welcome Jacob the Crocodile. Thank you for inviting me on your show. At first, I wasn't sure how I would feel knowing that you would be easy prey for me to devour. But since my manager told me that this was an interview and that I need to remain professional, I think educating the audience is of greater importance right now. I appreciate you for taking the time to keep me of your menu for the sake of the interview, knowing your reputation for catching your praise off guard. You're welcome. You are known for shedding tears when you kill your victims, and we often associate tears with emotions, sorrow, grief or sympathy. So the question is, what's the reason behind those crocodile tears of yours, and are they genuine? To be honest, people have been asking me that question a lot, and though they're not alive to tell the story, I would speak in honor of them. You see, it was once considered a myth that crocodiles wept as they ate. But now there have been studies indicating that crocodile tears are a real thing. Yes, we do actually shed tears while we feed, but it is due that we blow out large quantities or while eating and that tends to cause the eyes to tear up. So no, we are not actually crying, and we aren't really sad for our prey. So to answer your question, no those tears are not genuine. I should have expected that you wouldn't have that much sympathy for your meals. So how did your famous tears become an idiom? One of the first documented examples of this myth dates back to the 1500s. The stories of the travels of Sir John Mandeville, these serpents slay men, and they eat them weeping. Another example that the phrase was widely used can be found in Shakespeare's Othello 163. If that the earth could teem with woman's tears, each drop she falls would prove a crocodile. The first example of the phrase, insinuating that someone is not being sincere can be found in a story called Life and Acts of Edmund Grindle, written by John Stripe in 1710, and his tears, Crocodile Tears. Damn, you even got the great William Shakespeare calling women out on this sorcery. That's how serious this is. Yay, gotta respect the work. Definitely. So why would you say that women mastered your teachings? Do you remember when you were a baby, and say for example there was a boy and a girl? They both cry and realize that the parent or parents would then come to their rescue every time. So what do they do? They keep doing it for fun. So how does the female becoming a master relate to this statement? Have you ever noticed that the boys are normally told to stop crying and be tough, and not the girls? Now that you've mentioned it, yes, that always seems to be the case. And that's because the narrative is created in such a way to say that women are so fragile in every way to the point where if a father should scold his daughter, it would be seen as violence against women. 
hence giving birth to insincere women who celebrate the works of incompetent mothers until they run out of finances. Oh, so that explains why these baby mamas keep coming out after years of separation, claiming child support when really she's the one wearing the diapers with her bankrupt economy. Yes, exactly. And if these so-called mothers took the same approach as society did to boys, then there would be more women with long-term common sense rather than investing in long-term virulent and doltish behaviors that causes them to not differentiate between reward and punishment. So isn't the man to blame as well for some of this? Hence, the operative word sum, which simply means that she already knew that the chances of being a single mother is high. But, she cares about the swag overlooking his other 50 baby mamas and other women outside, because she believes that her vagina is the last piece of his jigsaw puzzle, and if that doesn't work, she uses the tears as her trump card knowing that once she gets the public on her side with the first scoop as if she were a news reporter then any other story might prove to be invalid when her life becomes a gag. That makes perfect sense. I've constantly noticed that when women display this behavior, especially online when associated with rappers or athletes they tend to use false emotions or cry online because they know idiots will always come to their rescue and tell her why she is royalty. Yet she keeps acting like a peasant. In my experience, the worst people to deal with are the athletes. None of them use condoms, really. So if y'all really want to try to come up off a check off a man, I mean, you could just fuck an athlete. They're really dumb. <laughs> You're the one who said it, not me. I wash my hands clean with this. Pontius Pilot style. I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. So are there any more scenarios that depict the mastery of the crocodile tears that you speak of? And are there any blind spots or weaknesses to this technique in more details? Of course. There are so much scenarios that display the true work of being the emotional scammers of this profound technique, which is to provide false emotional information that leads to loss of assets. In other words, the emotional con artist. However, to answer your question as it relates to a blind spot or weakness is this. Crocodiles are known for having strong jaws for jumping down which is why it's easier to keep a crocodile's mouth shut rather than trying to prevent it from closing down. So, just think of it as a pressurized machine. For a crocodile to totally bite down on its prey, it needs to use a lot of force to keep its mouth shut, which requires releasing additional air inside them that prevents them from making a tight shut. So in other words, it's all about timing and recognizing or analyzing the pattern or behavior that basically disguises itself as an oxymoron. Please proceed with your wisdom. First scenario. When a man takes a woman out on a date. Now granted, that when a man plans to spend a lot of money on a dinner date, especially restaurant level, they aren't trying to start a book club. You see, women know this to be true. And instead of letting the man know that she ain't got no food at her house, she broke, or she simply don't know how to cook a damn meal for herself. That way he can get you a to-go bag or a dollar sandwich without looking for sex, but... No. You decide to be fake knowing you ain't gonna give him any, and then gets mad when you find out that you had to split the bill because those tears were detected. Oh, hold on. Am I gonna beat them chicks tonight? No. No? Alright. I know that one. Such a classic. Second scenario. And this is another classic. Women and their poor choices in men. Let me tell you something. And as bad this may come across, it's irrefutable. If there were to be a series created that those called women the masters of poor dating choices, it would probably rival young and the restless or days of our lives. Ah, oh, that's actually quite funny. 
How this normally works depends on your environment and responsible parents. And since in today's world daughters are mostly raised by single mothers, especially with the fact that women are endorsing the single mom clothing line, in turn continues the cycle of the fashion trend. There are two stages of a woman's life that creates a pattern for them to be unsuccessful for future relationships. And they are her high school years and her college year or degree program period, in other words their twenties. They tend to focus on the guy's popularity, swag, height and stroke game overlooking their character, morals and values, three babies, three baby daddies and 250 pounds later, they want a hard-working man that was being responsible for his actions. Focused on his purpose, successful was not on her radar when she was a hot topic. Now she's irrelevant, and no longer an interesting television show. And once they hit their thirties, they're basically stuck in their fantasy loop after that waiting on the outdated fairy tale story to be read to her. I guess she wasn't able to latch onto the guy for whom there was no interest in the first place. She only got desperate because the other guys didn't want to. So the crocodile tears were formed, but unfortunately her mouth was shut before she could fully weep. Exactly. He saw the ambush coming and prepared for it. Third scenario. One of the greatest emotional schemes of all time is when a prenuptial agreement is presented to a woman. Let me tell you this. If you want to see crocodile tears on display, just present the idea of prenup to woman, and she goes nuts. The truth is for men who worked their ass off for what they have for 10, 20 years. To have a woman snatch that away in a year or two will sometimes eventually lead to your death as well. And believe it or not if there aren't any children involved. Then it makes it easier for him to get rid of your body without any investigation needed. Because a thief and a scammer has no gender, and therefore his violent intentions will not discriminate against robbers. That's a conversation that no one wants to talk about. But, for men who have a lot to lose, that is especially a good way to have certainty that she is there for you and not the money and since she's likely to file for divorce anyways. It's better for him to leave the marriage and freed, than leave the marriage going behind bars. So I think being single for those men are better until they get what they want so it's safe for everyone. However, if you're broke and only have $100 to your name when you got married, keep a sufficient lifestyle to see if she leaves after 10 years and if she does, settle everything between both of you and level up after get full custody, and let her pay child support. It's harsh, but that's the way some men would close a crocodile's mouth. You have to understand that many women don't care about what you had to do to get where you are as a man, because they are not a man and will never be. They only care about where you are now and what she then claims they should get. That's why they get all insincere about the prenup crying and saying things like You don't care about me. I'm not here for your money. I'm not like those other women who goes after a man's money. Or one of the most famous quotes I can't be in a relationship with someone who doesn't trust me. And just like myself, we don't care about our prey's struggles when we want to eat them. We just want to know that we're getting to have our way without you noticing. And when you eventually catch on, it would have been too late as you're already dead. What you have going on, your internal issues, your feelings, it has nothing to do with me. I can honestly say that that one was a hard pill to swallow. But when the truth presents itself as a medication, you can't help but throw up unwanted chemicals from the mind. Fourth scenario of the crocodile tear, and the one that can be considered as legendary would be paternity test. The mere fact that a woman can sleep with another man, gets pregnant and then chooses a father based on the reason that she can, and then cries both physically and figuratively knowing that she got caught and is going to lose, is the ultimate emotional scamming. 
And all men know that a woman will never admit to you not being a father because it exposes both cheating and paternity fraud and also the fact she might not know who the real father is or that she might be kicked out on the street. It's true. Like, it, it, the way that they're putting it, they can't be lying about what they're saying. Exactly. And that's the reason women hate paternity tests and acting fake when found out. And here's another reason why they hate the invention. According to a long-standing cultural and legal tradition, paternity is an intractable problem. Whereas the mother can be known at the moment of birth, the father, it is said, is always uncertain. DNA testing is actually a recent historical invention. It only emerged in the 1980s. But long before the all-revealing cheek swap, scientists set out in search of a proof of paternity. They ultimately found one, but their quest failed anyway. Traditionally, paternity was a social fact, not a biological one, discerned into possible ways. The first was through marriage. According to the law, the mother's husband was always the father of her child. So strong was this so-called presumption of marital paternity that if a husband was located within the four seas of the English Empire at the time of his wife's conception, English common law held he was the father of her child. As for the father of an illegitimate child, his identity was deduced from his behavior. The father was the man who had cohabitated with the child's mother or kissed the baby in public the man whom the neighbors saw paying the midwife. The scientific methods that emerged in the 1920s were evolutionary because they suggested a different way of understanding paternity, as a physical quality located on the body rather than a social quality reflected in a man's behavior. I see. And because of this scam, especially in modern times, is the reason why women who have these intentions tend to have a problem with mandatory paternity tests and uses statements such as there are more important things to tackle like poverty, crime and world peace. Why are you concerned about mandatory testing? You are insulting us women and I would not trust my man after I do the test because he does not have the right to ask me such questions. And I will not look at him the same way after the confrontation. And 18 years later you found out the child wasn't yours and her mission would have been completed simply because you were a sucker and got played. Yes, and that's how women master the crocodile tears technique with a little help from the one-sided laws of society. But, hey, I can't blame them. They've done quite well for themselves, but they will also lose in the end just like yours truly. And that, my friend, is the irrefutable truth. In all these cases mentioned, women shed crocodile tears because they are not sincerely remorseful or as sad as they claim to be. In cases where they apologize for their actions, it's considered crocodile tears because they could have chosen not to perform the action, but did so anyway, only to start crying when they have to face the serious consequences of their actions. Just because there are tears and sadness does not mean the emotion is genuine. Don't be fooled by a woman's crocodile tears watch her behavior, because their emotion may mean a lot less than you think. Class dismissed.